This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, can big tech steal your Bitcoin? This video is inspired by this question from Eleven Aniket Kumar. Please make a video on Microsoft Windows new recall feature. It captures screenshots every five seconds. They can directly steal our keys, meaning our Bitcoin private keys. For now, they are claiming that all data will be stored locally and users can disable it. But many times after update, many disabled things get enabled automatically. I'm considering shifting to a Linux operating system. This is Microsoft's recall feature. It seems that these screenshots that are taken every five seconds would be stored locally and you would need admin privileges to access them. But it turns out that that safeguard is easily bypassed according to this article from Wired. And it looks like the backlash against this proposed product has led Microsoft to say that this will now be opt-in. Of course, you never know what's going in the background of your, of your operating system. In related news, we have Apple introducing Apple Intelligence, AI for the rest of us. And as part of this, even though they're using their own AI, they'll also be using OpenAI's ChatGBT. I think this meme is self-explanatory. iPhone and Mac will now come equipped with ChatGBT for free. And this is obviously good for Microsoft as well, because Microsoft has a 49% stake in OpenAI, which makes ChatGBT. So it seems like these big tech companies win no matter what. So the question, can Microsoft or Apple steal your Bitcoin? The answer is yes, theoretically, if you're using a hot wallet on your phone, on your laptop, or on your desktop. A hot wallet is just a Bitcoin wallet on a device that has connected, is connected, or may connect to the internet at some point in the future. Now, Windows is so buggy and open to malware that it's more likely that some hacker steals your Bitcoin rather than a big corporation like Microsoft, which probably has better things to do. But the problem is the best programmers don't need to get a job at big tech. They can just try to insert some malware on your computer and steal your Bitcoin private keys that way. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support my work here. Click the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, if your hot wallet is hacked on your phone or on your computer, if you lose $10 worth of Bitcoin, $100 worth of Bitcoin, which is probably the most you should be storing in a hot wallet, it's not a big deal for most people watching this in developed nations. But how can you prevent attackers from stealing your Bitcoin long-term savings? This is the big question. And the answer is, of course, to keep it in cold storage. In cold storage, the private keys are held on a device that has never touched the internet and never will touch the internet. It's important to remember that hot wallets, cold wallets, including cold storage, these devices, these software wallets or hardware wallets do not hold your Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin is simply a record on the global distributed ledger, which is also called the Bitcoin blockchain. What instead is happening is that hot wallets and cold wallets hold your private keys. They store your private keys in a safe manner. They don't store your Bitcoin. What happens is your wallet creates a number of private keys that can be used to unlock the Bitcoin associated with a particular Bitcoin address. And you need to unlock it in order to send it to someone else, in, a, in other words, to spend it, or to send it to yourself at another Bitcoin address that you control. When you're using a cold wallet or cold storage, your private keys never touch the internet or the computer that you're working on. Instead, what happens is an unsigned Bitcoin transaction is passed into the hardware wallet, either in an air-gapped manner using a micro SD card like with the cold card or using a QR code as with the Blockstream Jade, which we'll be talking about. So that unsigned transaction is passed inside the hardware wallet in an air-gapped manner or via a cable that connects the hardware wallet to a USB port on your computer. That's still fine, but it's a little less safe than using it in an air-gapped manner. And then once that transaction, that unsigned transaction is inside of your hardware wallet, it is signed by the hardware wallet and then passed back out to your computer from which it is broadcast over the internet to the rest of the Bitcoin network so that a miner can pick it up and include it in a block. And this is how a hardware wallet can sign a transaction without ever disclosing your private keys to the internet. Now, should you use Linux instead of Windows or iOS? I think if you have to ask the question, you probably shouldn't. And if you're a non-techie like me and don't know what you don't know, for example, do I need to constantly update Linux to patch vulnerabilities? For example, how often should I do this? What can go wrong? Just stick to iOS or Mac OS if you have access to Apple products. Windows is always absolutely the worst, full of disease and corruption like its founder. The best Bitcoin hardware wallets are always Bitcoin only. They have a smaller attack surface because they don't cater to every stupid altcoin 
under the sun. And when you buy a hardware wallet from a Bitcoin only company, you're not helping to fund and prop up the scammy altcoin ecosystem as you would be if you bought a ledger or you bought a Trezor or something like this. Now, these are the hardware wallets that I recommend. And it's important to state here, I'm not being paid or compensated in any way to recommend them. I'm just a happy customer who has bought many, many Blockstream Jades and cold cards. This is my favorite, the cold card wallet. This is a little bit more expensive, but this really is the gold standard, or I should say Bitcoin standard for hardware wallets. And you can use it with a micro SD card like this in a completely air gapped manner. The less expensive hardware wallet that I also like is the Blockstream Jade, which is probably about $100 less than the cold card. And with the Blockstream Jade, you can use the QR pin unlock to also avoid having to plug your Blockstream Jade into a computer. When you set up your hardware wallet, it will generate a master key called your recovery seed. It will look something like this. It will be 12 words in a certain order, and it's very important to write them down and to write them down in the correct order. This is this is just taken from the BIP39 list, so don't try to use this. This is not a real wallet, or if it is a wallet, please don't use it because it's now completely insecure. This recovery seed is used to back up all of the little private keys and addresses that your hardware wallet can sign for. So if your hardware wallet is lost or damaged, you'll still have full access to your private keys and transaction history, and that's why it's important to store these in a slightly different location or completely different location from your hardware wallet. If anyone has this recovery seed, this 12 or 24 word recovery seed, they can easily and quickly steal your Bitcoin by sending it to an address, a Bitcoin address that they control the private keys to. So it's very, very important to store your recovery seed in a safe place. Never take a picture of it, never send it in a text, never put it anywhere on your computer or phone where it could be automatically uploaded to iCloud or Google Cloud or scanned by Microsoft Recall. Never send it in an email, never put it on Dropbox or Google Drive, never speak it out loud, never look at it in public where another person or a phone or a security camera could view it. Also to make sure to store your recovery seed in such a way that it will survive a flood or fire in your house. I like the seed plate, which is made by the makers of the cold card. This is a steel metal backup plate and you basically punch holes in it to record your recovery seed. If you found this video helpful, here are the two most important ways that you can help to support this channel and its growth and getting this message out to a wider audience by engaging the YouTube algorithms. You can click the subscribe button, become a subscriber. That's very, very important. And that is of course free. You can also click the join button and become a channel member. And this will incentivize YouTube because they're making more money when people do this to spread my videos. So the way to become a channel member, you can click the join button on any video or on the homepage. If you don't see the join button on your phone, you can go to the description and you can click on the first link I'll put right here, get your channel membership here. I'll also put the link in the pinned comment in the top comment uh, which i'll pin to the top of the comments and you can see what this will look like when you get there you'll have a chance to join either as a humble bitcoin pleb for 2.99 per month you get some loyalty badges you get some custom emojis or you can join at 40 uh, four dollars and 99 cents per month at the toxic bitcoin maxi level you can get some members only videos in addition to the perks from the previous level so if you enjoy my work here consider doing this to help to amplify my message if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when i publish my next video and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video